circumstances make perfect sense to us as we try to understand each move he makes but when the path grows dim and our questions have no answers turn to him bow the knee trust the suffering we feel and we are tempted to believe God does not know when the storms arise don't forget we live by faith and not by sight bow the knee trust the heart of your father when the answer goes beyond Wednesday evening. Stand with us tonight, if you will. Page number 96. Bring them in. We're going to sing all three verses. Heart is the shepherd's voice I hear Out in the desert dark and drear Calling the sheep who've gone astray Far from the shepherd's fold away Bring them in, bring them in Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Who oh, go and help this shepherd kind. Help him the wandering ones to find. Who oh, bring the lost ones to the fold. Where they'll be sheltered from the cold. 
bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Think about the words. Out in the desert, hear their cry. Out on the mountains, wild and high. Heart is the master speaks to thee. Good singing. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Welcome to our midweek service tonight. We're so grateful. For you being here this morning, or tonight rather, and being in your place for our midweek service where you've met to worship the Lord, and uh, we're so grateful and thankful for you being here, and uh, we've had a great uh, time already across the campus tonight. We had a wonderful meal and for the outreach workers, and we had, I think, 11 going out uh, tonight. I was very encouraged by that. We went into a lighted up area, uh, uh, apartment complex, and was able to hit, I don't know how many homes, I mean... I would say well over a hundred homes with the gospel and invitation to church. And uh, so let's pray that much fruit and harvest would come as a result of that. You never know what God and how God will use his word. And I'm very excited and thankful for the participation, the involvement, and the desire, the burden to go out. And so and then we're also looking forward to service tonight and here. Our teens will be meeting in just a few moments over in their new area. And uh, we've got that remodeled a little bit halfway, uh, and uh, Brother Robert and Tootie and others, uh, Michael and Joe, I, I, I think that's everybody, have been working so hard and helping us uh, knock out walls and so forth. And, and uh, so we've got pretty much almost the space of our what the teens were using, the Genesis building, so we've almost got this, that amount of space over there. And so I'm very encouraged by that. And uh, so we've, we've got to put down carpet throughout the educational building. I'll say more about that later on. It's, it's well do it. It's got several different issues. We need to replace that carpet. But I'm just so encouraged, and I know they're excited about that as well. And then Kids for Truth Program, Wiggle Worms Nursery, all of those guys over across the breezeway. And so let's pray for them that God would bless them with a great service over there tonight in the youth department. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessings tonight. If you have a need or a prayer request or you just want the Lord to help you tonight, would you raise your hand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for his help tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for allowing us to meet together again this evening. Thank you, Father, for this uh, weather. We love this time of year. It's it's a sweet time. It's a, it's a busy time, but it's harvest time. And Father, I uh, I pray that you would bless our outreach fathers. We went out tonight, uh, going out and, and, and giving the gospel to many homes tonight, in the Clemens area specifically. And Father, we ask that you would give much fruit and harvest from that, specifically, and people being saved, new families added to the church, the more labors for the harvest. We ask that you bless the teens as they meet across the breezeway, Father, in the educational building tonight, and also, Father, the... Uh, uh, wiggle worms and junior and primaries and uh, father i pray that you give them a great time together tonight and uh and father i pray tonight as we look into a new uh, series i pray that you'd speak to our hearts help us in a great way be with our church family father that are sick and those are not able to be with us tonight encourage those who are watching via live stream and father we'll thank you for what you do may you be honored and glorified through everything that's said and done tonight in jesus name Amen. Well, you can remain seated, but I want you to sing out with all your heart unto the Lord. I know it's Wednesday night. Sometimes on Wednesday, when we just get home from work, we just get in from school, sometimes it's hard to push that those words out, isn't it? But you'll be glad that you did. Uh, when you sing out in the congregation, you become a part. You're not just a spectator. You become a participator of the service. There's a big difference, isn't there? And I want to encourage you to be a participator tonight. Sing out with all your heart as we worship the Lord. This is one of my favorite songs we do on midweek. Appreciate Brother Holly picking this on that one. I want you to look at the words up on the screen. In my life, Lord, be glorified. And uh, there's a sermon in that, isn't there? Is God glorified in our lives? I'm glad I came tonight just to be reminded that Christ needs to be glorified in my life. Raise your hand if you realize that America needs the Lord. Do you know how God has chosen for Christ to be magnified and exalted, known. 
for his people. That's you and me. And so may God help us to, to sing this, but to mean it. Sing it all with all your heart. Thank you for singing out this evening as well. We had a couple announcements really quickly. I want to encourage you uh, to grab some outreach cards as you leave tonight. We've got some Christmas ones we just got in, and I know some of you are ready to pass those out, aren't you? Some of you, raise your hand if you've already decorated for Christmas. I can't believe, I, 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 uh, Houston and I were talking in the van, and, and Houston's, you know, we, we were both puzzled, uh, you know, did we miss Thanksgiving? What's it going on now? And uh, we're joking, of course, but um, uh, I, I enjoy Christmas time. I love it. It's one of my favorite times of the year, and, uh, but, uh, but I, I just, I can't help it. I'm a little old-fashioned in some areas, and one of those is the Christmas tree goes up after Thanksgiving. And some of you are nodding your heads. You know what I'm talking about. But if you've already put it up, that's, that's great, too. I, I think that's wonderful. But anyway, we'll put those out. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll pray about putting them out before Thanksgiving. We might do that. I don't know for some of you go, guys. But uh, anyway, um, uh, grab some outreach cards as they're out there already. And uh, pass them out. Work hard at that. And, uh, and give those out everywhere you can. All right. We had a guy here. I'll just tell you this uh, th uh, th th right now. Uh, on this subject, we had a guy, we had a first time visitor coming in on Sunday morning, and he sat back over here, and um, and he had a spectacular card with him, and it had been since Easter. He had got that in Easter, back in April, and he just visited our church for the first time. And so you never know, sometimes people will get an outreach card, and they may not come the next Sunday, they may not come the next service, but somehow God reminds them uh, that there's a church that cares. And maybe they put it on the refrigerator, maybe they put it on their desk or in the car or something, and they come across it. But he had that with him, and I was so encouraged. And I, I, he filled out a visitor's card, and I texted him. He said, Pastor, I enjoyed the service. We'll be back this, I'll be back this Sunday. And so I'm really encouraged by that. So let's really work hard with that and grab those and pass those out, okay? And then also, really quickly, don't forget about our services on Sunday. I'm looking forward to a great day on Sunday and looking forward to the uh, breakfast, 930 to 10. And uh, if you are not a part of an uh, uh, adult or children's Bible uh, class, I would encourage you to be a part of that this coming Sunday. Again, be in your place, breakfast, 930, anywhere between 930 and 10. And then be in your place on time, 10 o'clock, uh, for our adult Bible classes. And then also, 11 o'clock, our service as normal. We're looking forward to that, looking forward to worshiping the Lord together on the Sunday morning and then Sunday evening service. So keep that in mind, if you will. And then also, just a quick a couple things coming up. Operation Christmas Child, uh, if you got your boxes, uh, I know there was great participation. Joe was encouraged with it. 70-some, uh, is that the total? 73 boxes got gone, and so we need to send 73 out to Samaritan's Purse next week. And so those boxes all need to be in by Sunday night, uh, this coming Sunday. If you've got a box, bring it back full. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you can see Joe Eskridge and appreciate him doing a great job adding that up this year. And then also, uh, empty nesters activity. This is for the age, of, age group between, um, somebody help me, 50 and 65, and uh, Jeff and Nancy Cox do a good job with this, and they're going on December 3rd, which is a Saturday, down to the uh, Billy Graham Library uh, down in Charlotte, and for Christmas festivities and a dinner, and it's a big event. You're going to want to be a part of that, 
and if you're in the empty nesters, but there is uh, limited availability. I think the tickets are $50 a piece, but you get a lot for you, a meal and, and uh, all, all kinds of different things involved with that. There's information there out on the sign-up sheet. There's several already signed up. There's the information on the sign-up sheet, and if you have any questions, you can see Jeff or Nancy Cox. But uh, get by there and be a part of that uh, for December 3rd. But the deadline to sign up, I believe, is this Sunday, so keep that in mind, if you will. Young at Heart Fellowship. Young at Heart, this is from 66 up till I don't know, what, 155? No, I don't know what the deadline is on that. We don't have an age deadline on that one. But uh, Young at Heart, you have, we're, this is, a, this is the, a revival of this fellowship. We appreciate Michael and Vicki Cincinnati heading this up. And they'll be meeting Tuesday, November 15th at 9.30 in the morning. And uh, for a breakfast at the Clemens Kitchen, there's a sign-up sheet. A lot of folks have already signed up. I'm so encouraged with that. Uh, and uh, if you want to be a part of that, see the sign-up sheet uh, out in the entryway. And again, if you have any questions, see Michael or Vicki Cincinnati. Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship will be meeting this coming Tuesday, November 15th at 7 o'clock. So keep that in mind. And uh, ladies, if you're not a part of that, I want to encourage you to be a part of that. It's a great time of ministry. And uh, as the ladies get together in the activity center, and they do a lot of great things, especially this time of year. Thanksgiving midweek service and meal this year, it's always the week of Thanksgiving. It's always we move our midweek service from Wednesday to what day? Tuesday. Tuesday. And I hope that's a blessing to you. I promise you it will be a blessing this year. Robert Martha Church are doing the chicken stew. I thought I'd hear three or four amens right there. Martha and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> retired pastor just you know uh chicken stew and uh we're excited about that now if it's good weather we'll kind of watch the weather and we may have it out back out here like we did one year with the with the campfire we'll have a devotion out back everything will be out back here with around the big campfire and we'll have the chicken stew and all of that and uh, so we're looking forward to that again tuesday night the week of thanksgiving instead of mid instead of our midweek service on wednesday on tuesday seven o'clock Everybody will be out here, okay? And then if we, it's, if it's, uh, if it's uh, rainy or too cold, we'll have it over in Heritage Hall. And so keep that in mind, if you will. And there's a sign-up sheet for desserts only. So churches take care of the chicken stew. Robert Martha, of course, are doing all that. We'll take care of the drinks. But if you'd like to help, we'll bring in a dessert. If you'll sign, see the sign-up sheet in the entryway, okay? And then also, um, we are doing, I mentioned this just a while ago, um, we're doing some remodeling in the educational center and educational building. And um, so we, we knocked out walls uh, for the teens, and uh, it's a big old room back there. It's incredible looking. And uh, we're, we're switching around some things with the junior and primaries. And uh, we need to put some new uh, carpet in. We've got several different places where it just, it, it'll, it'll work, but we, we just, it just needs to be fresh. It just needs to look good. We're looking at about 15000 for that. We'll let you know more about that as it comes along. But we need to do some painting as well in there. And uh, so um, we, we can go ahead and do that now. And uh, if you have any time on your hands, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and you would like to paint, and you can somewhat hold it between the lines, if you can help us, we would appreciate that, okay? And you say, what is the pay? Well, as one preacher said, the payment is out of this world, okay? And you'll get your payment at heaven, okay, if you do it for the right motive. Uh, but uh, anyway, but uh, let's, uh, if you would like to do that on a serious note, let us know. We appreciate that. Okay, let's all stand all over the building once again. We're going to turn around and shake hands in just a moment between these verses. This evening, what I want you to do between the, between the verses when we sing and when we turn around and shake hands, I want you to find somebody, maybe a first-time visitor tonight, maybe someone that you haven't shook hands with in two or three weeks. I want you to go to someone. Leave your pew. Leave your seat. Go find someone. Greet them with a smile and a handshake. Welcome them tonight. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Teenagers are dismissed. Let's turn around and fellowship tonight.
tonight. Let's sing these last couple verses together tonight. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. standing and we're going to receive our offering tonight ushers you come forward at this time if you will please and uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer over the offering and our Wednesday night offering always goes to what missions, missions. and uh, I appreciate uh, the missionary Benjamin George being with us Sunday night and uh, I don't want to encourage you to continue to pray for he and his wife and they're expecting their new one in January. So very exciting times for them. So let's continue to pray for them, if you will, please. And then uh, we'll be uh, talking about him and perhaps the Bundys as well in the very near future. And so uh, we're grateful for a church that is uh, not looking at having to uh, reduce their amount of missionaries or reduce their uh, monthly giving, but increasing it and taking on new missionaries. I'm grateful for what God is doing, and he's doing it through you. And uh, it's not a one-man show, it's a church-wide effort, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you uh, for allowing God to use you uh, and to give to the missions. I know some give, I don't know this, but I'm certain that some give online to missions. You can give, if you do online, you can give to the building fund online, you can give to missions, you can give to youth fund online, general fund, whatever you choose to do so, or you can give in the plate. And I want to thank you for being faithful in that department. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God for his blessing. Jeff uh, Cox, will you come up here and pray for us, if you will, please? We appreciate both Jeff and Miss Nancy doing a great job with the empty nesters and uh, all that they do as well in other areas of our church. Pray for us, if you will, and then you can be seated. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here tonight in your house. Lord, we just ask that you uh, be with uh, this offering, Lord. I ask you to bless it to the missions. And Lord, I just ask you to be with the message tonight and, and let it reach each of us in a way we need. Lord, all these things we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Turn with us to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter number 37 tonight in your Bible. Again, thank you for being faithful to the house of God tonight. And I'm excited about all the teaching going on all over the campus tonight in the educational building. And, uh, and then also at here. And I thank the Lord for his word and uh, what we can learn from it. Genesis chapter 37 tonight. And if you're familiar with your Bible, you'll, you'll know that we're headed towards uh, talking about Joseph tonight. So Genesis chapter number 37. And um, I, I want to talk to us uh, tonight and the next couple weeks on a little mini-series. It's not going to be long, uh, but just a little mini-series on this topic. Bringing positive results through proper response. Bringing positive results through proper response. And uh, let's begin reading in Genesis chapter number 37. Genesis chapter number 37, and look with me in verse number 1. We're going to read down through verse number 19 tonight. If you find your place, would you say amen? amen. Verse number 1 of Genesis chapter 37, the Bible says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. 
In verse number 2, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock. So he's a what? He's a shepherd. Feeding flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilal and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Uh, he told on them. Okay, and verse number three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And uh, raise your hand if you're the baby of the family and you just got some special attention and you knew you were the baby of the family. Uh, my Ellie, uh, she is, um, she's the baby of the family and sometimes I think she knows that. And uh, she, she uh, my wife, she, um, uh, my wife, I don't know where she is now, but anyway, she wasn't here somewhere, uh, but uh, she uh, has her baby sister. Uh, she's got four, uh, three siblings, including her, there'll be four total, and her baby sister is like 10 years younger than she is, and uh, she's the baby of the family, and she says, she gets by with so much more than I did growing up. But uh, Joseph was the baby of the family. Look, in, and of course, then you have Benjamin. Verse, look in verse number 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. In verse number 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 6, and he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. And verse number 7, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Now, time out for just a second. Did that actually happen? In, a, in, in his dream, they bowed down to Joseph, didn't they, later on? If you'll fast forward the story, Joseph... Uh, gets into Egypt by way of mischief, of course, through his brothers and so forth, and a lot of different turn of events. And Joseph gets into Egypt, and then he gets falsely accused. He gets in prison, and then he is brought to be really, if you will, the vice president of Egypt later on. Egypt is in that time the world power. So basically, Joseph um, uh, goes from being just an ordinary sheep herder, a shepherd, to being vice president of Egypt, which was the world power at that time. And so he's a very prominent position. Uh, there's a drought during that time. There's a drought. Uh, there's there's a, a famine, rather, and there's no food. And so J Joseph's brethren come to him uh, to, to seek food as a result of the famine because there's no food anywhere. And, and, and Pharaoh has put Joseph as vice president in charge of delegating the food production and all of that. And they come not knowing it's Joseph as vice president. They thought he's long gone, dead. They didn't know where he was and they just figured him as dead. But they come to Joseph unknowing it's him and guess what? They bow down to him because why? He's vice president now and they're doing that out of respect. So this actually did uh, come true. This vision, this dream, just like God gave Daniel uh, dreams and, and some of the Old Testament prophets. Um, God uh, gave this dream to Joseph, which actually came true. And so Joseph is a spiritual man. Joseph is a spiritual man. And uh, now if you say, Pastor, I had this dream that so-and-so is going to be in the, do this and all that, you know what I'm going to say? What did you eat before bed? Okay, because God get, has given us his complete revelation through his what? Through his word today not through dreams and revelations in our minds and so forth. And so let's continue reading in verse number 8. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou, in, shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. If I'm not mistaken, that's the third time in these eight verses that the Bible references their hate for their brethren. Verse number 9, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Here again is a spiritual dream that God has no doubt given him of future uh, events that did come to pass. In verse number 10, And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him. 
and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to, the, to thee, uh, to the earth? And so basically what his dad says is, Joseph, you're causing some trouble. Joseph, I don't know about all your dreams and where they're coming from, but Joseph, don't you understand? Your brothers already hate you. And now you're saying your brothers are going to bow down to worship you. Joseph, you're causing some trouble. Joseph, are you saying also that me and your mother are going to bow down and the sun and the moon aspect of that? Uh, Joseph, you're causing, some, you're causing some tension in the family, Joseph. Uh, Joseph, you need to think about this. And again, of course, we understand all of that came to pass. And continue reading in verse number 11. And his brethren envied him. So now they've hated him, but now they're being jealous and envying him. But his father observed the saying... And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And I tell you, that's what we ought to always say unto the Lord. When God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit or through the word of God, we ought to say, Lord, here am I. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. As the missionary uh, surrendered, as we saw Sunday night, to Argentina and others across the world. Looking at verse number 14. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent, out, uh, uh, so he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and, came, and he came to Shechem. Verse 15. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when he, they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. So not only have they hated him, it's very well known in this passage, they've hated him, they're envying him, and now they're thinking of murdering him. And I want to talk to you for just a few weeks again, as we mentioned earlier, on bringing positive results through proper response. And tonight I want us to look at the proper response to tension. Let's go ahead and pray and then we'll explain this and get in this tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word tonight. I pray that you'd use me for just a few moments to be a blessing to our church family. And this is a topic that we all deal with. And I pray that you would help us. Uh, give me clarity of thought mind and use me for a few moments again to be a blessing and a help to your people tonight, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Through the life of Joseph, we see a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's, 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 it's obvious. Um, I, I love the life of Joseph. Raise your hand if you've uh, studied the life of Joseph or gone through a study and heard about Joseph. Joseph is a very uh, interesting character to study. Uh, there is no record, to my knowledge, there's no record of any uh, sin that Joseph did. Now we know Joseph is, was a sinner because no one has, has lived a sinless life other than Jesus Christ, right? But him and Daniel are the only two people that we know of that, that really don't have any record of their sin. We know there's David, we have a lot of record of his wrongdoings, do we not? And others who did wrong. But, but, of, but of Joseph and Daniel in the Old Testament, we don't really have record of their doing wrong, although we have a lot of record of their lives. But Joseph is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but he's, he was a beloved son, beloved, as we read, by his father Jacob. He loved Joseph and did not God the Father love his son Jesus, of course. And G, uh, Joseph uh, was a type of Christ because he's a good shepherd. And Jesus is the good shepherd, as we know, and Joseph was a shepherd. He heard the flock there. And we also, it's a type of Jesus Christ because Joseph was sent, as we read tonight, as a servant to go to his brethren from his father. And wasn't Jesus sent from the father to go to his brethren and to really to all the world to die for our sins? Then we also see how Joseph is a type of Christ and that he was falsely accused. And of course, that's another story of Joseph's life and, the, and uh, Potiphar's household. And Jesus was falsely accused, wasn't he? G Pilate said, I find no fault in him. And Joseph is also a type of Christ because uh, he was the exalted one. He went from the prison to the palace. 
He was exalted and, and was not Jesus Christ. He is exalted at the right hand of the Father, and one day he will be for all the world to see. And Joseph is also a type of Christ because he was known as the, a forgiver to his brethren and a friend to them, and isn't Jesus known as our forgiver and friend, amen? And then Jesus, uh, lastly, and we'll move on, uh, Joseph is a type of Christ because he was the Savior of the world. At that time, he was because there was no food anywhere else. And through the wisdom that God gave Joseph, there was seven years, if you remember the story, there was seven years of plenty of harvest in Egypt, and then there was seven years of drought. Well, they took those seven years and saved it all, and so all the world, although they were going through a famine, Egypt had it all, and Joseph was in charge of delegating that. And he used, God used him to be the Savior of the world, as Jesus is the Savior of the world. But what I want us to notice tonight is, although all of these things are great things we just named, we can also learn from Joseph in the ways he responded to hard and difficult situations. Joseph responded and how he did in hard and difficult situations. There is a difference in reacting and responding. There's a difference in reacting and responding. And this is what this mini-series is really going to come to, is, is how to respond pro appropriately and properly, and how that will help us in really every relationship rather than just reacting. The Latin root of react is this, back, to do, perform. What it means is to taking action back at somebody. In other words, if somebody stuck their tongue out at you, you would do the same back to them. You would react, okay, back to them in an action. If somebody popped you on the face, you're going to pop them. You react by popping them back in the face. If somebody cursed you, you would curse them back. It's a reaction, and that is the natural tendency. If you push me, guess what? I don't know if I'll push you back or not. I, it depends on, I guess, what's going on. But I do know my sibling. I'm not my sibling. Well, yeah, my siblings too. But my children, if one of my children pushes the other, guess what's going to happen? They're going to push them back. I mentioned little Ellie Ruth a while ago, and our, our youngest. And she is the youngest, but she doesn't take anything from the older ones. She stands her ground. Mom and Daddy don't have to defend her. She's a pistol. You don't mess with Allie Ruth. You probably don't mess with Allie Monroe much either, do you, Jay? <laughs> uh, you know, and so, you know, it, that's the natural tendency of our lives. If somebody criticizes me, I'm going to criticize them. If somebody lies about me, I'm going to try to figure out how to lie about them. If somebody does me wrong or cheats me, I'm going to try to cheat them. If somebody... You know, and so that's the natural reaction is to take uh, back and to perform and take action back. The Latin root of respond is to go back with an answer. So the reaction is to return, uh, the, excuse me, to react is to turn around and with action and do the same thing, okay, if you will. To respond is to turn around to go back with an answer of some sort. It is a slower, it is a slower way to, uh, to, to, to um, realize what's going on and how you're going to respond to that situation. When we properly respond back at someone or a situation, it can bring positive results. In contrast, when we react, many times the results are negative. Has it, let me ask you a question. When somebody, let's say, when somebody did you wrong, and so you reacted by doing them wrong, how much did it profit you? Did you grow through that? Did you build a relationship through that? But when we properly respond to a difficult situation, when we don't try to take action back at them for what they did to us, and when we respond appropriately, 
there can be a lot of product that will come from that. So the answer in our hard and difficult situations is not to react and to go back at somebody and to get back at them and take revenge and all of that, but to respond, to take our time to know how we're going to answer them. I'm going to give you a verse of Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 7. Listen to it. You can write it down. Look at it later. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Isn't that interesting? It, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Everybody's got enemies. If you don't have enemies, you're not doing nothing, saying nothing, being nothing. You're not doing anything. You, you, you're not saying anything. If you say anything, if you take a stand for anything, you're going to have an enemy. You say, I don't have any enemies that I know of, Pastor. What about Satan? By coming to church tonight, you've marked your ground very clearly where you stand according to the Word of God. And so you're going, we all have enemies and how, and, 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 and they're constantly, whether it's Satan or whether it's an individual, whether it's a situation, how we deal with that affects our, really, our altitude and how far we sail in the Christian life and how far we go. And tonight we're going to look at this proper response to tension. Let me ask you a question. Don't raise your hand. Have you ever experienced tension? If you haven't, walk out those doors. You're going to experience tension somewhere, somehow, if not in our own homes on a regular basis. We all experience tension. Tension, a definition of tension can be a mental or emotional strain. And we're going to look tonight, as you can already kind of, kind of sense that, Joseph had some tension in his home. We read in those first uh, eight verses three times when it tells us very clearly, God tells us very clearly, Joseph's brethren, his brothers, they were half brothers, but they hated him. No, no stuttering. That they hated him. Then later on, they envied him. Then later on, they were trying to figure out how to murder him and get by with it without daddy knowing it and mob of figuring out. And so they hated him. Could you understand that there's some tension in the life of Joseph? Let me give you three things tonight. Number one, notice the cause of tension. The cause of tension. Verse number, look back with me in verse number 3 and 4, of Genesis chapter 37. It says, now Israel, and of course we understand that God gave that name to Jacob, of course. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Raise your hand if you've heard that story, okay? The coat of many colors. Okay, we learned that many of us in Sunday school growing up as a child. In verse number 4, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So they were harsh to him. They were mean to him, perhaps even at the breakfast table. They, they didn't even try to hide their hatred. You ever have anybody that kind of tries, tries to hide? You know they hate you, but they smile when everybody's around, you know. And they stab you in the back when you turn around, you know. You know, the people have hatred in their own. They These brothers didn't even try to hide that. They didn't even try to hide that. Uh, they have, uh, their, their, they realized that their dad loved Joseph because he was their, he, this was my, my baby, if you will, uh, the baby of the family. And so he, t he, he cared for Joseph and he loved him so much that he gave him a coat of many colors. He didn't give all the other brothers one. Oh, and that caused their hatred to just bawl. And they were harsh to him. I could see him at the breakfast table. I don't want to sit beside Joseph. Get away from me, Joseph. Just tension constantly. Joseph, you can't do this. Just constant tension and could not speak peaceably into him. Joseph lived with much tension in his home. And there are several areas. I want you to notice four different areas of tension that we can possibly uh, deal with in our home. Tension, letter A, tension could come from a scriptural stand that you take. Sometimes when you stand, when we stand for what we believe in and stand upon the Word of God, there's going to be tension from others who do not believe the same. Let me give you a verse of that in Psalms chapter 11, verse number 2. 
For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. Just sometimes, just because you do what's right on the job, you're going to be hated for it. Sometimes in your home, just because you want to go to church, you're going to be looked down upon for the others who don't because you're goody-goody. And there's going to be tension there just because you're trying to do right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In your neighborhood, uh, you're going to be known as the Christian, the goody-goody guy, the goody-goody girl who always tries to do what's right. And you're going to have tension amongst your neighbors and tension amongst your co-workers and tension amongst family members this Thanksgiving and Christmas as they whisper behind your back simply because you're trying to vote right, simply because you're trying to do what's right in your family, simply because you're trying to go to church every time the doors are open, simply because you're trying to do what is right, there becomes tension. Can I say, it's worth it. It's worth it. And there might be some tension flaring up, but it's worth it to do what's right. And I think at the judgment seat of Christ, when we stand to give an account of our lives, and we hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, I think we'll realize full scale that it was worth it to do what is right. Anybody can just fall by the wayside, and, and anybody can just do whatever and give in to it. And, uh, but it takes somebody with some grit to stand, and even though there's tension to do what's right, with grace, of course, but standing. Then tension can not only come maybe from a scriptural stand that you take, but tension could come from social media. You say, Pastor, I bet you don't have a verse from that. Get your pens ready. Ready? Write this down. 1 Peter <laughs> chapter 4, verse number 15. I don't know if it's a verse that goes with social media or not. But uh, I believe that, I'll give it to you in just a second. I believe, honestly, this is, this is a, I, I, I genuinely believe this, that we, we have so much stress. I've never heard of stress and anxiety so much in my life. I mean, before I got married 12 years ago, before, and I guess, I don't know when social media really just started being everywhere. I guess when we had iPhones and it was just constantly in our hands, I guess, probably. So whenever that was, 12, 13, 14, 15 years ago, I don't know, uh, maybe prior to that. But the, I think social media and the media department in general has brought a ton of anxiety and stress. You say, Pastor, I am, I am really living a stressful life. Before you take medicine, why don't you take out some things of your life? Why don't you try excluding some media time? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just shooting that. I know I didn't hear some, I didn't hear many amens, but why don't you try that? I'm not telling you to, and some of you may have to work in it. I don't know, but I'm just simply saying, why not try it? Why not try it? Try, t- try to take away some, some of that, some of that media, the screen time to kind of sum it up. Why don't we take some of the screen time of our life? I know this is foreign. Some of you are looking at me like a bullfrog in a hailstorm. You're like, you know, you got a pastor. Are you, do you know what you're preaching? This is 2022, pastor. I'm full aware of that. But I think that it, if, if we're going, if, if we're going to keep our minds, yes, we need to pray. Philippians chapter 4, we just got out of that study. We need to pray. But I think God's given us some wisdom too. And I think that if we're not careful... The, the screen time adds stress and anxiety to our lives. Oh, what's so-and-so doing? Oh, they're doing that. Oh, we need to do that. Oh, they got their Christmas tree up. Honey, we've got to get a Christmas tree up. You know what the Joneses have? They've got their Christmas tree up. Honey, we've got to get a Christmas tree up. <laughs> they got a new car. You say, what's the verse for it? Are you ready? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. I don't want to be a murderer, do you? Or as a thief. I don't want to steal, do you? Or as an evildoer. I don't want to be an evildoer, do you? Or as a busybody in other men's matters. It is very interesting to me that in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 15, we have a couple of different characteristics, and none of them are good. And a busybody and other men's matters are classified in the same verse as a murderer and a thief and an evildoer. 
I don't want to be a busybody <laughs> in other men's matters. Because evidently God is classifying that as a, as a, as a bad testimony. And so what does it do? Uh, faith, social media, if we're not careful, and again, we're, we're on it tonight, far as I know. Mike, are we on? He, I thought he was asleep at first. I was like, Mike, are we on? I don't know. And I'm just kidding. I love but Mike and I pick at each other. You, you say, Pastor, you pick at Mike too much. You ought to hear the jokes after church, all right, and what he tells me after church. But anyway, we have a great relationship, and I love with Mike and appreciate what he does so very much. But... Um, we're on social media right now. Social media is such a tremendous tool, and I thank God for it. And I'm not preaching against it. I'm not saying that you ought to get off of it. I'm just simply saying evaluate your life and consider what you need to do uh, if something is, is, is off and not right, because tension could come from social media. Um, and sometimes we, 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 uh, sometimes you say, well, I'm not trying to be a busybody in other men's matters. But if, what, if you're so involved... What, with what everybody's doing in the country, that it is affecting you negatively, then you need to consider something. You need to consider taking a break from that. Um, and so, um, uh, so tension could come from social media. I know that's, that's a reality. Well, uh, wife, you don't understand. You know, so and so got a got a got a new fishing boat. Yeah, but they make. Two hundred thousand more dollars a year we make. Yeah, but we got to figure out how to get that. Uh, we, I got to get a new what night job. Well, you're working sixty hours a week already, and what are you thinking? Well, do you know where I'm going with that? Tension from social media. There, notice the third thing: tension could come not only from scriptural stand. Tension can come from social media. Tension could come from a stirring within your soul. The stirring is really what I'm referring to as conviction. Uh, the, uh, the stirring could come from evil around you. You ever, you ever been around somebody that was uh, in your, your spirit, did not agree with their spirit, and, uh, and of course that's, that's scriptural, and, and you just you felt uneasy around somebody, and of course we want to witness to them, but there was something spiritually off. There's maybe some demonic activity or something going on there, and you just and you just but the stirring, the tension, could come from something that is maybe abnormal. Uh, the stirring could come from evil towards you. Maybe somebody's doing some something wrong towards you, and the tension comes as a result of that. And fourthly, tension could come from a spirit without. What I mean by that is what Joseph was dealing with: a spirit of jealousy, a spirit of hatred a spirit of uh, contempt, and uh, that's what I mean by a spirit without. And so there's many causes of tension. We all deal with tension, sometimes in our marriages, sometimes uh, with our siblings, sometimes with our parents, sometimes with our children, sometimes with perhaps another church member. I certainly hope not. I do not know of anything. But sometimes tension can come from so many different things, neighbors, co-workers, really anything and really any area. So there's many causes of temptation. Then secondly, I want you to listen very carefully because I want, to, I, I want us to, to stress the second point before we move on to the last, and that is the consequences of tension. As when tension comes and we do not respond appropriately and, react to, and we react to it in a wrong manner, what is the consequence of that? The great consequence of tension will be the loss of a relationship. And, and this is what I mean by that. Tension in a relationship reduces the ability to learn from one another. Do you think that Joseph was a spiritual person? I truly believe he was. You say, why do you think so? Because of the dreams that God gave him that later on came true. And so I believe there was some spirituality in Joseph's life. I believe he was a spiritual man. And we don't find Joseph trying to hit his brothers because they hated him. We don't find the Bible talking about Joseph hating them back. But we, we find Joseph dreaming these dreams. So what we know about Joseph uh, is, is that he is a, he's not sinless by no means. We know that. But he is, a, a, we believe, a spiritual person. And do you agree that his brothers could probably learn something from him? If he's spiritual, they could probably learn something. But their hatred for him and the tension there is keeping them from learning from Joseph. 
And many times, God, I think, puts great relationships together in a, in a work environment, a neighborhood, or a home, or whatever it may be, a church, and, and there, there's a great relationship that I can learn from somebody else. But if there's tension there, I'm not, if there's tension between me and somebody else, I'm not, it reduces the, uh, the ability that I have to learn from them because I'm not looking at what I can learn from them spiritually. I'm looking at how much I hate them and what the wrong they've done to me. And so I shoot myself in the foot. We shoot ourselves in the foot by not being able to learn from others as a result of the tension. Is everybody with me tonight? Look now, uh, the next thing, tension in a relationship reduces the ability to lean upon one another. I don't know about you, but guess what? I need you. The Bible says, bear one another's burdens. I need you. I need your encouragement. I need your spirit. I need your refreshing spirit to uh, and encourage me in the, in the ministry. And I appreciate the text and the prayers and so many things. And I said, Pastor, I'm praying for you. Pastor, I love you. Pastor, I appreciate that. I need you. I don't know if you need me or not, but I need you. And I know enough about the New Testament early church that we need one another more now than ever before. The Bible doesn't say in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. It doesn't say that. Uh, just, just because the, the, you, you know, just need to be there. But we need to encourage one another, exhorting one another, building one another up. And we know, and if there's tension there in your home, if there's tension between you and somebody else, then that ability to lean upon them in times of trouble and helping them and then being a, a confidant that you can trust in and you can talk to and you can share one another's burdens... It reduces that. Notice number three, and we're done. The correct handling of tension. What is the correct handling of tension? So one, we've, we've talked about the cause of tension, okay? Uh, and it could be so many, there's so many different variables that go into that. Why we have tension in our homes, why we have tension here, why we have tension here. I mean, it could be so, the, 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 the possibilities are really endless. Why tension between other people? And so there's a lot of tension. Now, number two, we talked about the consequences of that. It really reduces the, the, the relationships that we could have. I'm in this world not to, be, not to be ugly to people. I want to build relationships, right? And that's what God wants to do with us is build a relationship, right? And we have that through Jesus Christ as our Savior. Uh, but we need to know Him, as the Apostle Paul says, and learn of Him. And that relationship needs to get stronger. Uh, I, 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 I entered into a relationship with my wife uh, June 26, 19, no, not 1900, uh, 2020, uh, no, not, not 2020, uh, 20, I'm going to get it right, sweetie, uh, 2010. Yes, I did. Okay. June 26, 2000, 2010, I entered into a relationship with my wife. And, um, but now I'm still getting to know her and building that relationship, of course, as we all do in our marriages. Now, the correct handling of tension. How do we correctly handle that? Here's the answer. You got it. You see it, right? What is the answer? Be spiritual. Joseph, we've already discussed. This is, this is really complex, isn't it? Joseph, and I'm, I'm being smart. Joseph we've already addressed, is, a, we believe, a spiritual person. God, later on, we find that he was in the prison, but God was with him. Later on, we find that God uses him, that God gives him wisdom. Joseph, in, the, in, the, in, the, in his life, in his testimony, is God's blessings all over his life. God putting him in situations where he could be used of the Lord, Joseph was spiritual. Joseph was, his spirituality was seen in his dreams, as we've already talked about. His spirituality was seen in his discipline, as we already talked about. We don't find him uh, you know, cursing at his brothers, being mean back to them, hating them back. He was disciplined. He had to be disciplined. And can I encourage you and I to be spiritual in times of tension? You and I cannot control what other people do, but you can control how you respond. I can't control what my neighbors do. They could egg my house. Now, I, I can, I can, how I respond to that, how I react to that is up to me. 
but it will be in my benefit, my benefit, not theirs, my benefit as a child of God if I properly respond. And I will be much better off to properly respond if I am spiritual. I want you to turn with me, and we're going to be, we're going to be done in just a moment. Galatians chapter 5, a very familiar portion of Scripture that most of you know. And this is really the, the, the end of the message. When we are exposed to tension, if it's in our home or our, co- or our job site or wherever it may be, when we are exposed to tension, we have two choices. You've already heard what they are. One, we can react, and that would be in the flesh. We can react, we can get back at them. Or we can respond in the Spirit. Galatians chapter number 5. Are you there? Look in verse number 17. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 17. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Uh, verse number 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now give special attention to verse number 19. Now the works of the flesh. Paul's right there. What is that? That is the, that is the carnal man. That is the man that I am. Um, apart, I know I'm saved and so God has saved my soul. But I still have the fleshly nature. Do we not? And we've just read that they're contrary. My spirit and my flesh doesn't get along. Josh Bowles wants to react. The Holy Spirit of God who dwells within me, my soul and spirit, says respond appropriately. Look in verse number 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. In other words, uh, the actions of our flesh are, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, What is the next one, church? Say it out loud. Hatred. By the way, we just hear witchcraft. Be careful with that stuff. It's everywhere. Amen? It's trying, it's, media is pushing that and so many other things, as you know, into the minds of our children. Adultery, witchcraft, hatred. Hatred. Did we not find that word or some form of it back in Genesis chapter 37? as his brothers hated Joseph. So work of the flesh, not the work of the Spirit. Hatred, by the way, anytime if you hate somebody, you can mark it down, you're not living in the Spirit. You're not living a Spirit-filled life. You're living according to your old nature. You may be saved, amen. You can't lose that, amen. But you're not living in the Spirit You're living according to your carnal, fleshly nature. Adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife. Can we say tension? Looking seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you live that kind of lifestyle, uh, and, and there's no conviction, there's no, that you don't have a problem with that, there's no, there, there's no conviction about that life, there, that is a testimony of somebody that's not saved, right? But you and I, as, even though we're saved, we can live and walk in the flesh, Instead of the Spirit. Now, look in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace. Those are the inward things that we experience when we walk in the Spirit of God. Instead of doing what Josh Bowles wants to do, when I do what God wants me to do, I'm going to experience love, joy, and peace in my heart. Notice the next one is long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. These are outward to my fellow men, my brothers and sisters in Christ in the church, my husband and wife in the home. I don't have a husband, I have a wife, but you don't understand what I'm talking about. My husband and wife in the home, my children, my parents. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Temperance is self-control. And so when I'm walking in the Spirit, I'm going to have the evidence of that here. So it goes back to the conclusion. 
When we are exposed to tension, and you will. When we are exposed to tension, by the way, America around this time of year, specifically yesterday, today, this week, is full of tension, is it not? You say, Pastor, whose side are you on? I'm on the Lord's side. I'm on the winning side. I voted, you know, and I stood scripturally where I should. Amen. Did my part, did my best. I prayed and prayed and prayed. Did my, you know, I'm trusting the Lord. But you say, well, what's going to happen? I'm trusting the Lord. My hope is not in a house that's built with hands. I'm trusting in the Lord. But when tension comes, we have two choices. We can react in the flesh, which is going to be hatred, emulation, strife, variance, tension. You're going to create more of that. And that is a product of respond, a reacting in the flesh. Reacting it's natural. You hit me, well, you not just, you know. I can't believe she said that about me on Facebook. Well, I'm just going to give it to her now. I'm going to expose everything about her. You're exposing the fact that you are not very spiritual. And instead of reacting, you would be a whole lot better off for your testimony. Sometimes we're so blinded in the midst of reacting, we're so blinded in the midst of reacting that we forget we're not, we're not we're, we're, our own testimony is at stake. And we hurt ourselves more than who we wanted to hurt in the reaction process. And so before you react, Respond appropriately. Reacting is in the flesh. It is having hatred. It is, it is causing more tension. It is getting back in an action. Responding would be in verse 22 and verse number 23. And having patience towards others. Having love in your heart for them, just like Jesus did for those who crucified him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And just like Joseph, we don't find any, we don't know, but we don't find any record. We have a lot of information about his brothers hating him, but they, we don't find a lot of information in his testimony about him reacting back to that. But we find God using him. So that tells me that Joseph responded to the tension appropriately. And when he responded, Appropriately, instead of reacting, God used him. And when you and I choose to respond appropriately to tension, God can use us. We grow spiritually. Now, this is a much easier preached than practiced, but it is true nonetheless. And so may God help us to walk in the Spirit and to respond slowly with gentleness and meekness and temperance, self-control and love and peace in our heart towards tension that may come at us in whatever form or fashion it may. May we respond with love and peace and temperance and self-control, all of these things, instead of reacting with hatred and more tension. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. bringing positive results through proper response. Now, next week we'll continue this series and we'll talk about another subject about how to res proper respond to some other area as we'll mention that to you next Wednesday night. So let's be in our place for that. Let's stand together all over the building with heads bowed and eyes are closed. Musicians are coming. We never want to close the service without an invitation and an opportunity to do business with the Lord. And if you're here tonight and you're not saved, tonight would be a wonderful night to trust Christ as your Savior. And if you're here tonight and you have a need, the invitation's here. Would you come at this time? Place that need upon the altar. As the musicians begin to play, would you come? The stillness of this moment. Would you trust the Lord? Say, Lord, help me to respond to the tension in my life spiritually.
Lord, there's tension here. Lord, there's tension there. Lord, help me not to react to that. It's so natural. It's so easy to do that. And that's exactly what the Satan wants you to do. That's how marriages end up with divorce. That's how relationships struggle. That's how we can't learn from others. We can't lean upon others as God intended because of the tension. May God help us to respond appropriately, appropriately with having a spirit-filled life. continue playing just for a moment we'll pray we'll have our prayer request and then we'll be dismissed but if you have a need would you come Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to my heart. Father, help us always to respond to tension. Father, next week, we'll, as you've placed in my heart, we'll look at another aspect of how to respond appropriately to another area of life that we deal with. And I pray, and Joseph dealt with, and I pray that you'd help us with that. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. We're going to do our prayer request tonight. And you say, Pastor, why did you preach that? Is something going on? Uh, the only reason I preach that is God, God put it on my heart. And I promise you that. And uh, I don't know, as far as I know, every home in our church is in perfect harmony and peace and wonderful bliss. As far as I know, I have no clue. And as far as I know, our church is experiencing wonderful revival. And, uh, but I do know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And uh, so I don't know why the Lord placed on my heart. But there is tension in the world. There's no doubt about that. And uh, so we could all apply that in some way or the other. We have several different prayer requests that we want to mention tonight. And, uh, and then we'll take outspoken prayer requests and uh, then we'll be dismissed. I want to encourage you to pray for our shut-ins um, and then uh, that God would help them. Um, uh, the, most of them are listed on the back of the bulletin. And uh, Miss Kay Marion, I had called her the other week and, uh, and uh, just left a message with her. And, uh, and she called me back while I was out knocking on doors. And so, um, but she said she had a surgery uh, uh, coming up on the 18th to remove a cyst. And uh, I think I heard that right on the voicemail. So let's pray for her with that. And then also, again, all of our shut-ins. Let's pray for all of our uh, missionaries all over the world. Let's pray for our country, our nation. Let's pray for Israel. And uh, let's pray for uh, our services on Sunday, of course, that people be saved. And we've got a lot of sickness going on, and uh, let's pray for those who are sick to get bet well. And we're missing folks tonight because of sickness. So let's pray that they, God would keep them, uh, restore their health. And then also let's pray for Miss Wanda Michaels, uh, Randy Smith. I talked to him on the phone the other day. He went by Forsyth Hospital. I think it was Forsyth, and uh, and had some check, had some things checked on him. And uh, Brother Michael, do you know was he discharged? Is he back home? Okay, so but pray for Randy. He, he really needs your prayers with a lot of different things going on, depression, other things, anxiety. Pray for him. Ryan Marlowe, uh, I haven't got an update on him. Every time I look over there, uh, my wife, she keeps disappearing. And, um, but <laughs> but uh, anyway, I don't know where she's going. But uh, let's uh, pray for Ryan Marlowe. Does anybody have a, a report on him, Miss Kelly? Okay. 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 Let's continue to pray for uh, Ryan Marlowe, pastor from North Wilkesboro, uh, that they pronounced dead uh, several weeks ago, and now he's 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 alive. And uh, so let's continue to pray for him. Miss Betty Potts going through some health issues. Uh, let's continue to pray for her, if you will, please. And then also uh, Miss Billy Owen, uh, Miss uh, Beverly. You want to give us an update on Miss Be Billy? Yeah. 
Sure. So let's continue to pray for Miss Billy Owen, former pastor's wife here, and then also sister Miss Beverly. And so let's continue to pray for her with cancer. And uh, Miss Beverly, if you didn't hear over here, Miss Billy's having more bad days than good days. And uh, Miss Billy, Miss Beverly, was encouraging us to give her a call card and uh, letting her know that we love and praying for her. Uh, Lawrence and Patricia Miller continue to pray for them, if you will, and uh, especially Lawrence Bunny Manning continue to pray for her grandson Alex. Uh, Nan Harris, continue to pray for her. She's doing great. So we praise the Lord for that. Continue to pray for her, if you will. Melanie Williamson, uh, continue to pray for her. Miss Melanie, are you here tonight? I s okay, yes. Sometimes you're over here. And uh, so good to see you, Miss Melanie. Let's continue to pray for her. And uh, Miss Melanie, we read your card on Sunday night, and I don't think you were able to be with us, but uh, thank you for that. And let's continue to pray for her with cancer treatments, doing well. And then Olivia Morton, we're praying for her grandmother with cancer. Charles Petit, making some progress. I saw Miss Vicky on uh, Sunday, continue to pray for him. Norm Casto, uh, continue to pray for his brother, as well as uh, Norm will have, be having a pacemaker. Norm, do you have any uh, time frame on that? Not yet, okay. So let's pray for uh, his pacemaker, that that would be able to come available to him very soon with a procedure for that. And then also, uh, Miss Martha Church had asked us to remember Miss Susan Whitehart's mother. Uh, she was in a car wreck here recently. And uh, Miss Susan Whitehart was uh, uh, a member here of our church, or it's part of our church family, and she moved back to the uh, Wilson Raleigh area. So let's continue to pray for her and her mother. Anybody else have any outspoken prayer requests tonight? Okay, Miss Linda. Amen. Let's hear it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the, the, the praise report of the progress there, Miss Linda. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Raleigh. Okay, so just uh, restating Olivia Morton's grandma, grandmother and in, in the hospital tonight, so pray for her. Miss Sandy? Okay. Oh, yeah, Miss Nancy, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's pray for Nancy Collier and uh, with her procedure in the morning. You said in the morning? Okay. Sterling? Okay, let's pray for Sterling's wife. Anybody else tonight on this section? Ms. Donna? Amen. Amen. Okay, anybody else? Ms. Ann? Continue to pray for Miss Betty with getting a heart monitor. Anybody else? Okay, Jeff. Okay. All right. Let's pray for Jeff's dad with the procedure. Okay, Mike. Okay, let's pray for Mike Moser's procedure on Tuesday that everything will come back clear with that. Anybody else? Okay, Ms. Kelly. Okay. 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 
Okay, so let's, okay, so pray for Ms. Jen's family members going through a procedure out of state. Let's remember them. Anybody else? Okay, uh, Jay? Okay, yeah, Miss Laura's, uh, Miss Laura Staley's due any moment, and uh, so and let's all, uh, so let's pray for her that everything will go well with the birth and delivery of the new baby. Anybody else? Okay. Let's. Uh, if you have an outspoken, excuse me, if you have an unspoken prayer request, would you raise your hand tonight? And uh, we're not going to come around the altar, but let's pray together. And I mean that when we pray, and, and, and let me just mention this as well, and we'll be dismissed after we pray, but if, uh, when we pray from the pulpit, I want to encourage you to pray right there where you are and to say, Lord, whatever we're part of the service we are, maybe it's the first part of the service, while somebody's opening up in prayer, let's have a spirit of prayer and say, Lord, bless the service. Lord, speak to my heart. Lord, save people that are lost. Lord, work in our hearts. Lord, give us revival. And uh, if, if things like this, Lord, please work in people's hearts. Comfort, give strength help people physically, whatever the need is there. All right, let's pray together. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for our church family. I love these people, and they're very dear to my heart. And Father, I thank you for the spirit of love. I thank you for the spirit of uh, revival. I, th I know it's Wednesday night. I know everybody's tired, but thank you for a spirit of enthusiasm, a spirit even still. Thank you for a spirit of, of uh, burden for the lost. Thank you for a spiritual... Uh, uh, temperature and I give you all the glory and praise and thanksgiving for that Father I pray that you'd help many tonight that we've, that we've read off those that we've heard we thank you for the praise reports from others we ask that you would meet the needs Father that you've heard just a moment we've heard a moment ago I pray and Father we know you've heard them as well and I pray every one of these individual physical needs whether it be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual whatever it may be I pray that you'd meet these according to your will. And we'll thank you and trust you for what you do there. Father, help our country, help America to turn back to you. Do that which is right and pleasing in thine eyes. Father, help, our, help the right leadership, get the right positions of leadership. And uh, that, would, that would have godly uh, Christian vi values. And I pray that you would continue to help Israel, bless them, give them peace, help our missionaries all over the world, bless them, use them. And again, help our folks, help our church family. Bless our services on Sunday. Father, I pray that you bless in many, many ways above and beyond what we could even ask or think. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. We love you. Amen. Let's all stand together. We're going to be dismissed. Thank you so much for coming. If you're glad you came, would you say amen? I love you, church. You're the best. And I want to thank you for coming tonight. Turn around, shake about three hands before you leave tonight. We'll say God bless you as our closing prayer. We'll see you soon on Sunday. God bless you.